Well, hi everyone, Sean Humphreys here. Welcome to All Things Retirement. Well, retirement often when we do videos is about financial planning issues and tax planning, cash flow management and investing. But I've often said in our videos that retirement planning is more than that. It's about lifestyle, health, uh, activities that bring fulfillment through our retirement years. So in today's video, I have the real pleasure of introducing you to my wife, Tanya, and she is a foodie. She loves food preparation, making food, dreaming about different ways of approaching recipes. She's really passionate about it. So Tanya, thanks so much for helping us out today. And uh, what topic are you going to share with us today for the video? So today we're going to talk about broth. We have three videos we're going to do and the first one is on chicken broth and that's what I'm going to talk to you today about. Perfect. So I'm going to let Tanya continue. I'll be behind the scenes working the cameras. So take it away Tanya. Okay, so you might ask, um, why film broth? Well, this is a really economical, easy way for us to get amazing nutrients into our body. And through middle age and our senior years, getting all the protein we need, all the vitamins and minerals we need, can really be a challenge. This is an easy way, a low cost way to add a lot of nutrients to our actually everyday diet. So, um, one caveat. So the first thing I'd like to talk to you about is just sourcing a chicken. So when you source your chicken, one of the most important things about broth and the way that you can control the quality of the nutrients in your broth is to have high quality things that are going into it. And the first and biggest thing is your chicken. So if you can try to get a chicken as your budget allows, as healthy and as well raised as you can if you know the farmer even better but to get a chicken and stick it in a crock pot that way your chicken can be used for a dinner or two and then we can use the bones and what remains to make our broth so the first step is simply to put your chicken like this into your crock pot to add a little bit of water that will allow it to steam a little bit. And then simply to close it up, put on your um, crock pot. I usually do it on medium for at least eight hours, usually 14 to 16. Then if you like it to be crispy on the outside, you can stick it into an oven and crisp it on the outside. Okay, after you've eaten your chicken, we've enjoyed a couple meals of, on that chicken, we've collected all the bones and the leftovers that were in the crock pot, we want to try to get as much as we can of the nutrients out of those bones. And one of the best ways to do that is to use a quality apple cider vinegar that still has the mother in it and we give it probably three or four tablespoons. Now why do that? The purpose of that is to draw the nutrients out of the bones, out of the spices and out of the vegetables to the maximum level. So once you've added a little bit of apple cider vinegar to aid in the drawing out of the nutrients, especially the gelatin and the calcium, then we need to add a whole bunch of spices. Now these can be all according to your flavors that you like or even according to the health issues that you have. So to be honest, one of the major reasons I make broth is for bone strength and bone density. And so making it gelatinous and full of nutrients that help bones, skin and hair are really important to me. So some of the things that I add to my broth are things like turmeric. Now if you want to just add salt and pepper to your broth that would be fine too but I want to give you the full spectrum of if you are going to do the Lamborghini of broths these would be a lot of the things that you would put in. So salt and pepper to taste make sure that your salt is not table salt but high quality mineral salt. Some rosemary that adds a lot of flavor add a lot of minerals and vitamins. I add two kinds of seafood. Because I don't eat seafood as much as I should, I add kombu and I also add something called dulse. 
Then of the spices, bay leaves, turmeric for joints, parsley, and I have some uh, red onion dried from my garden. You can add one kind of onion, either chopped up onions raw, or you can have powdered onion. There's some garlic powder, and I have put all of it on this plate so that you can see it all. It has a beautiful array of colors, and we are often asked to eat the rainbow of colors, and those are the things that will add a lot of nutrients to our broth. So we're going to pour that in. Now the one nutrient that I love to add that I don't have here with me today is chicken feet. Chicken feet um, add a huge amount of gelatinous so that your broth is, has a little bit of that jello shakiness and that is extremely good for our digestive system. It's very good for our skin, bones and hair and it's actually um, been shown to help us actually with digestion and issues of our gut. So there's um, every reason if you can possibly get chicken feet to add it, but it's not always easy to source them. So once you get all of your spices in here, the last thing you need to add is some vegetables. So what you can do is go to your fridge and add any vegetables that are just kind of on the edge in there, carrots, celery, onions. And if you're preparing food on days before you make the broth, just store all of the carrot peelings and the onion uh, skins and anything you have that you can put in here. So I have a few things here that we will put in. So garlic, I've prepared some garlic. We're gonna plop those in and spread them out. We've got some onion. You don't need to cut them in little pieces. You don't even need to take the skin off. You just put them in whole like that. Celery, I'm just going to cut off the ends that have gone bad and get some chunks of those and pop that in. There really is no limit to the vegetables you can add. I'm going to add some onion skins for two reasons. One is that they add vitamins and minerals, but they also add a beautiful color to your broth so that when it's finished, it has a beautiful color to it. You want it to be as clear as possible, and I'll show you how to do that. And then finally, we're going to add some carrots. Now, if they're organic, you don't have to peel them. And I just chop them up a little bit so that they fit a little bit easier into the crock pot. So once you get all of that in there, even if you have a good sized crock pot, it's going to be very full. I just pour a little bit more apple cider vinegar. And then we're going to fill it about an inch from the top with water. We're going to put on the lid. And what's very important is that we cook it on low because if you cook it on high, you are going to get rid of some of the gelatinous quality. So it's better to cook it on low. Anywhere from 12 to 40 hours is what people have done. I usually do it for about 24. So then I'll cook it on low and my crock pot will only go up to nine hours so I usually set that two or three times. So that's what you do to get your broth and we'll come back when that's all ready. Okay, so 24 hours later, when your broth is all finished in your crock pot, you can take a bowl with some sort of a strainer and put them together. Then you're going to take some cheesecloth or sometimes if you don't have cheesecloth, you can just do two strainers. And you're going to take a big spoon, take out all of your large pieces in your um, crock pot, and then put those in the garbage, or if you have chickens, you can take them out to your chickens. Drain it through here 
so that it produces just the clearest broth. And if you have to strain it twice, that's no problem. Also, just shake out what's left in this into the garbage and wash it in your washing machine and it comes out beautiful and white even after many uses. Then when you're done, you can store the broth in jars in your fridge, in any kind of container, for about a week. And if you're drinking a cup a day with a sprinkle of some nice mineral salt on top, either hot or cold, um, you can easily go through this in less than a week. Other uses of it is that often I will take two or three quarts and make a big pot of soup, or I'll take one quart and cook rice or noodles in it so that the flavor of that broth goes into whatever it is that you're cooking. If you have a lot of broth and you don't have anyone to share it with, you can also seal these in a pressure canner so that they last three to six years on your shelf uh, without being refrigerated. So those are the tips that I have for making just the best broth. Um, so here's to your health. So what'd you think? Amazing. So broth has a lot of medicinal qualities, right, to it? It helps our bodies. It does. Tatania, I know you put together a little bit of a list here on some of the benefits of broth um, as part of our, our diet. So what are some of the main benefits of broth? So the main benefits of the uh, broth are that it's extremely nutrient dense. There are protein, minerals, magnesium, potassium, and gelatin. And in the gelatin um, are things that will repair the lining of your stomach. It's also way more hydrating than just a glass of water in addition to that. Also in terms of the joint health, as I spoke of before, there is um, collagen and gelatin. It does a lot to help things like arthritis. And then finally for our skin, it improves the elasticity and wrinkles. So depending on the quality of the broth that you make, um, all of those things will be impacted. And I think that after a couple weeks of taking some broth, you'll notice significant positive changes. Do I have any wrinkles, honey? <laughs> anyway, thanks again for uh, listening to this video, All Things Retirement. And I hope you had a few uh, ideas, maybe we inspired you a little bit to look at getting broth. And I think as well, for those of you who may not be inclined to make your own broth, can you buy broth from health food stores? You can in stores like, um, I know that Vita Health Food Store has it in many other places. Um, it comes in a Tetra Pak and it's no problem to get it that way. Okay, here's to all things retirement. You take care. Bye-bye. Well, I think you'll agree that Tenny did a great job of going over the uh, ingredients and the process for creating some bone broth, some great health and medicinal benefits attached to that. Now, if you look at the show notes for this video, you'll find a recipe for bone broth and some links back to our websites if you want to find out how you can get a free retirement income planning analysis and additional educational resources. Take a look at that link. It can take you back to a website so you can get access to those free resources. Anyway, wishing you all the best in your retirement journey. You take care. Bye-bye.